Well, welcome back to another video. It is a beautiful morning here in Texas, and as I'm getting ready, finishing up load development for the deer season, I wanted to talk practically about how you should zero your hunting rifle. There are many schools of thought that are out there, so I'm gonna give you a couple of examples about how I tend to think about it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the ballistics. So here we are at the computer. I'm gonna show you the ballistic calculator, the trajectory, uh, information that I use. We've got three different cartridges that are here. Going from lightest to heaviest, 22250 Remington. Super fast, super flat shooting, can be used for deer size game uh, here in Texas. It's an all right round. I don't love it. Uh, the 55 and 65 grain bullets usually get the job done, but it's not my favorite. More frequently used for things like coyotes when you're hunting out in big long ranges where you are predator calling. So that's the first one. Number two, everyone's favorite, 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, the reason I picked this particular cartridge is number one, it's very normal. Federal is a pretty trusted name in the game and it's 140 grains. So this is the 140 grain uh, fusion tip bullet. It's just a bonded soft point. So we're gonna look at it from that perspective. The third one is probably one of my favorite offerings that I've had recently. And it is this Barnes 308 win and 165 grain with the Sierra Game King bullets in them. This is a new thing that uh, Barnes has been loading this year and I got some pretty good accuracy out of it. We're actually gonna take it to the range on our range day this weekend. So let's jump over, let's talk to the ballistic calculator. Let's enter our information and see what all this spits out for us. All right, so here we are. We're looking at the site that I usually use it's called shooterscalculator.com. Big shout out to Hootie Who for showing this off on his channel. I think it's a great tool. It's free to use and you can enter your information. So the number one tool that I'm gonna utilize is this ballistic trajectory calculator, which is easy for me to say. So we're gonna click into it here and we're gonna take a look at this particular calculator. We're gonna title this in 22250 Remington Winchester 55 grain. We are gonna go through and we're gonna enter all of this information here. So you can usually utilize the box to find this information. I'm not sure if it's available here. So if it's not, you're gonna to have to uh, wait for me to grab it real fast. Uh, let's go back over here. Our G1BC is 0.251. We're gonna enter that there. Bullet weight is 64 grains. I thought these were 55, but they're 64. And again, box velocity off of this one says at the muzzle, 3,500 feet per second. So that's what we're gonna base our calculator on. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Some of the other information that you're gonna enter are like your sight height, meaning how high above your bore is your scope, the center of your scope line. Usually it's about an inch and a half. You can measure this to get more accurate um, information, but usually I leave this at about an inch and a half. It's a good place to start. Wind speed and angle, also fine. Uh, depending on where you're hunting, look at these two here. You may not need a thousand yards. You may only need 60 or 600 yards. So for these purposes, we're gonna include 600 yards. Chart, step size at 50 yards. So it's gonna show us our data at every 50 yards. So uh, here is the one that we're here to talk about today, zero range. Now, this one again is, is widely debated, mostly among people who are hunting in the West. Do you want a zero at 100 yards? Do you want a zero at 150 yards? Uh, or 200 yards, 250 yards. What is the most applicable for you? Uh, one of the things Ron Spomer really talks about a lot is maximum point blank range, which means what is the range uh, that you can aim at the center of a target, an eight inch target, and hit it uh, at the shortest distance and the longest distance you can hit that eight inch circle. For some of these cartridges, that number is a lot further apart. So for example, 22250, uh, you may be able to hit at 50 yards and also at 450 yards in an eight inch circle. Whereas with something like a 400 Legend or a 450 Legend or like the 360 Buckhammer, those are straight wall cartridges that are traveling really slow with these incredibly heavy bullets. They're going to drop way faster at distance. And the reason I bring that up is you have to think about how you want to zero your rifle and what sort of effective distance you're gonna be shooting at. So for the purposes of today, let's start out at 100 yards. That is the most common place that we can zero our rifle. So we're gonna leave it at 100 and we're gonna ask it to create this graph. We have a drop chart, so what we would actually see in terms of how far that bullet would fall. And one thing I wanna call out is, as we get down here to 600-ish yards, we're crossing that 72 inch mark. So that's about six foot. So that bullet is not falling super fast compared to some other cartridges that we're gonna look at today. So let's scroll down. Now you have the actual full chart here. Uh, you can see our range here in this far left column, and it's stepped out at every 50 yards. 
and then our elevation in inches. So you can see here at zero yards, we're one and a half inches high. And what that means is our sight is one and a half inch above our bore. And so if you were to put your muzzle up to the target, you would hit one and a half inches low if you're aiming point blank at something. You can see our calculated muzzle energy, which matches what the box says at 1,741. And then our velocity, uh, which is 3,500, which we entered from the box a moment ago. Now, as we start to step this out, you can see we begin dropping. So this elevation column, second from the left, things really start dropping here. Uh, but it's not as fast as you would expect to see with maybe some other cartridges. But the thing that's important that I want you to take a look at are this elevation in MOA and elevation in mills columns. These are things that you'll need to know if you're trying to dial for distance. So for example, at 150 yards, you're 0.37 MOA. So you're like a click, click and a half getting out there. At 200 yards, you're one full click out. And as we go way out here to 400 yards, you're 5.3 uh, clicks out. So really again, five and like a quarter. And then all the way down here at 600 yards, you are 12 clicks out. But one thing I want you to consider as you're looking at these drop jars is what type of scope do you have on your rifle? The most common one that we see with a lot of hunters is MOA, if you have dials. Not everybody has dials on their scope. You may be sort of locked in and looking to hold over. And this type of tool is gonna give you the information that you need to hold over at distance. A handful of years ago, I was shooting with a 308. It was 130 grain barn TTSX. Uh, deer walked out at 330 yards, shot and double lunged him at that distance. Without knowing this information, I couldn't have made an ethical shot at that distance. And this is one thing I want you to consider as you go out in the stand this hunting season. Now it's mid-November. Uh, being out in the woods and making ethical hunting shots is how you're going to recover more animals. So I've moved on. We're gonna look at the 6.5 Creed more now. And I just ran up this graph so you didn't have to sit through and watch me build it. But one thing I wanna call your attention to that I did different with this graph that I didn't do with the other one is, I set the zero to 200 yards. So rather than be, being zeroed at 100 yards, we are looking at a zero that's a little bit further out. This is really intended for longer range shooters who want to have more space to maybe dial out that rifle. Or maybe if you're somebody who doesn't have dials on their scope, but you want to have to worry less about your drops at distance, 200 yards could be a valuable zero for you. And let's look at that in practicality. Here is the 6.5 Creedmoor with the Federal Fusion 140 gram. Took all the information from the box with the exception of the G1BC. I had to get off of the website and it's something like 4.76. So we entered all the information, same sort of step out for the graph here. But again, call your attention to the first really three, four columns here. So you can see our muzzle velocity all the way at the end is 2,725. So considerably lower than we saw with the 22,250. But when you start looking at the zero, if we come out here to 200 yards, you can see here we are zeroed at 200 yards, which means we're going to be hitting a little bit low at some of these 50 yard step distances uh, out here, meaning, for example, our, I'm sorry, a little high. And uh, you can see here, like at 150 yards, you would actually need to dial down in order to be able to hit dead on at shorter distances. For this one, as you begin to look at further out distances, just like we saw at uh, about 600 yards with the 22250, we were around 75-ish inches. Here we are with a 200 yard zero with the 6.5 Creedmoor, and now we are only dropping 80 inches at 600 yards. Now, 80 inches is not nothing. <laughs> 80 inches is really hard to quantify at 600 yards. Uh, what I would tell you here is monitor your dials. So 12 and three quarter, again, we were around 12 with the 22250, and three and three quarter uh, mills uh, out at that distance as well. So again, the dials are approximately the same, but we changed our zero distance by 100 yards. As you begin to step out your zero distance, you begin to increase the variables at closer distances. We're gonna look at that with a 308 now. All right, so we're back here with a 308. So before we jump down into the uh, details here, I want to just bring to your attention some of the information that we got from the box. And one specific call out is with the Federal Fusion, we didn't have as good of a ballistic coefficient as we do with this particular tip Game King bullet. Heavier bullet, better BC, a little slower, zero distance is further out. First call out here as we're starting to look at these. Number one, you can see how substantially higher we are here at 100 and 200 yards in order to be able to zero at 300 yards. So when you think about throwing a football, for example, this is a really good a way to look at it where you're throwing it it's going up it's passing sort of through the midline point where the uh, plane is where you threw it and then it's landing lower uh, further from where you threw it again in the ground just like a bullet would but 
no, a bullet's better at flying than you are at throwing football. Out here at nearly 600 yards, we're only dropping to about 60, we'll call that like six-ish inches. We'll look at it here in a second. But you can see the trajectory looks really good here compared to what we've seen before. So zero distance, 300 yards, let's keep that in mind. Looking at the raft down here at the bottom, you can see as we move through these, there's 2.3 inches high, there's four inches high, there is six inches high at uh, 150 yards. So about halfway to our zero distance, we're reaching sort of the peak before it gets down to the zero point. So nearly six inches high. That's something to think about if you're shooting deer at 100, 150 yards, that six inches can make a big difference in where that bullet's hitting on the animal. So then we start looking at 350, 400 yards, we're dialing up three MOA at 100 yards beyond that. And here we are at 600 yards where our other dials have been nearly 12, 13 MOA. We're only dialing 10.38, but we've increased our zero distance to 300 yards, an additional 100 yards here. So now you may be asking, what is my practical zero distance? For me, it's 100 yards. 100 yards is number one, really easy to get there. If I was shooting a cartridge, maybe that had uh, some really interesting stopping power out the distance, 200 yards might be a better way to go. And here's why. If I am trying to kill an animal that is three, 400 yards away, which I don't necessarily recommend for every shooter, I think if you're gonna kill an animal that's that far out, you need to have a ton of practice with that particular rifle and cartridge. But if you're gonna be shooting at something that's much longer range, a two or 300 yard zero could make sense for you. Part two of this video, we're gonna look at scopes and help you figure out what is the best scope for your hunting rifle. This is a really interesting topic that I wanted to cover as we move into hunting season, because number one, as we move through hunting season, I'm going back into low development for a handful of rifles. But the other part of it is, I want people to take the cartridges that they're most comfortable with and the firearm that they're most comfortable with into the range with them this season and be as effective as possible with it. So if this video helped you out, I'd love for you to leave a like down below. If you learned something or there's something that you feel like I forgot, please include that in a comment down below. Share this. If you're not already subscribed, as most of you aren't, please hit the subscribe button down below. I'm really looking forward to part two of this series. We've got stories from deer camp coming up and I've got a big range day for finalization of hunting loads and a few more fun things coming up this weekend. So again, appreciate you sticking around and we will catch you in the next video. See you.